Welcome, this is Tom Rush, Rush Reviews. Today we have a knife with a lot of history. This is the uh, uh, Duke Duke. It's uh, a French knife, hails out of uh, France, and it's uh, uh, it was pretty well there, I think like their standard pocket knife uh, uh, of the day. Uh, this company um, that created this it's all started back in 1929 I believe and uh, yeah uh, it's, it's as I say got a lot of history if you I won't go into some of the details because they can be a little bit uh, a little bit gory but uh, yeah it's certainly uh, uh, rich in its history so uh, if you want to find out more about the history of this one uh, you can find out on Google and uh, it'll no doubt bring up all different sites telling you all sorts of uh, uh, good and bad stories about this one. When I say bad, I'm talking more about uh, what some, uns some unscrupulous people uh, uh, use this knife for. So, uh, However, pretty well the rest of the time it was just a standard pocket knife. So I'll, uh, I'll give you... Uh, a little bit of a, a look-see at this one. I'll just give you an idea. This is a medium-sized hand by the way and uh, I'm holding it there and it's uh, it is a slip joint so quite literally you can see the back of it there. It's about five mil uh, in the width of the handle there. It's got a couple of pins that uh, one on the uh, bail here and uh, one up here to the pivot for the uh, the blade and it's just been hammer pivoted and uh, yeah it's pretty rudimentary but uh, it definitely is a, a, a great knife to sort of give you a, a little bit of a insight as to how simply you can make a knife and back then uh, I believe it, uh, it it did really well uh, the uh, uh, blade steel is just a, a carbon steel, I believe it's uh, 1075 uh, and it's about 55 RC Rockwell uh, uh, tested. So the give you a little bit of a zoom up here and I'll show you uh, some comparisons. Uh, probably the most, the best comparison I could give you would be the uh, the cat knife or the K55 uh, uh, German made knife. You can see there that uh, they're similar designs in terms of, you know, once again this is a uh, piece of uh, metal that's been folded with a machine and uh, uh, you know stamped and uh, yeah it, uh, it sort of similar sort of style. It's the closest that I had in my collection anyway that uh, I could give you a, a look at. So they're around about the same length and uh, the difference mainly is the blade shape, the uh, fact that this one's uh, an actual locking mechanism whereas this one's a slip joint. Uh, and obviously both rich in uh, history but I've already done a review on this one so if you want to find out more about this one please check out my review on it. Uh, I uh, Yeah, I probably use them about the same but uh, yeah anyway that's a uh, look at a comparison there and you've got uh, something like uh, Opinel number no. 8 which is uh, yeah just a uh, another French uh, blade number no. 8 and this one it's only here for reference to give you an idea as to the, the thicker blade, as you can see there. A lot thicker on the uh, duk duk. So, is that one? Uh, a Sford uh, blade out of New Zealand. Uh, once again, a very, very old design, design, uh, design with this one. It's a uh, a peasant knife so this is uh, definitely uh, rich in history also uh, the uh, other one you'll probably be aware of is the uh, just 
comparison size wise between the uh, SAC uh, Victrinox and uh, Leatherman uh, PS2. So there you go. That uh, gives you a little bit of a, an idea. So let's see what I can uh, show you on this one. The let's zoom out a little bit there. The uh, you want to be very careful. Uh, this is a very strong back spring on it. Uh, when I say strong, it, it is strong. Uh, so, which is great. I mean, if it's if it's uh, not a locking blade, where well, you you certainly want a fair bit of tension so that it doesn't fold and chop your fingers off. So, the way in which I actually uh, choose to uh, close this so that I don't chop my fingers off is there. You go. That's it's. Uh, half point uh, mark there and then there you go and you can probably hear just how how uh, much force that that comes down with so there you go like that so that's the half stop and then I'll let you hear that as it shuts get your fingers in the way oh and that's the full stop so yeah, it's, it's probably not going to, unless you're doing something really aggressive with it, uh, you know, chopping up uh, cardboard or whatnot, you sort of get caught and you could chop your finger off that way, but it's pretty unlikely. It's such a, a great uh, uh, and strong backspring uh, that this actually has uh, inside the uh, top portion of the uh, the handle, or, or sorry, towards the back of it. So, yeah. Uh, very, uh, very interesting uh, blade, but I'll pull that back out. I'll give you a little bit of a, uh, a rundown of it, uh, at least what I can tell you. Uh, now, the so you're looking at an overall length on this one uh, from tip to the uh, start of the uh, handle back here, the base of the handle, you're looking at uh, 200 millimeters or 7.87 inches. This is the larger one I believe and then there's uh, a smaller one as well. Um, I think I've heard there's even three sizes. I'm not sure if there's a bigger one than this or a smaller one than the smaller one that I've seen of this but anyway um, the overall closed length of the uh, the knife is you're looking at 4.33 inches or 110 mil or 11 centimeters uh, so it's quite you can put it in the pocket no problem you can always uh, it doesn't have a clip uh, on the back so you can always uh, uh, it's got a bail there so loop so you can always uh, put a bit of uh, uh, a lanyard on there and just have it hanging out your, your pocket and whatnot so you can quickly access it. I've never had a problem because it's so flat it really sits well in the pocket. Um, so yeah uh, definitely a, a selling point and to get it out there's no nail neck it just has uh, enough plenty of room for you to grab onto to pull it out and uh, you're looking at um, uh, blade thickness on this one. The spine 3.2 millimeters I measured and uh, so it's fairly strong but although it's uh, it, that's it could be a little bit thinner possibly but it does add to the strength and the uh, actual uh, profile on this it, it's all I believe it could even be a uh, I'm not 100% sure here but I believe it could even be a no it's not a hollow point okay but very sharp very slicey um, okay, I'll get something to slice there and give you a look at uh, what it's like I just gave it a, it's been in the drawer for um, quite some time, so I did just give it uh, a little quick strop, about uh, 10 strokes each side, but uh, yeah, 
It's a nice latch. And because it is such a thin uh, blade, it really lends itself to uh, being extra slicey as well. But, uh, yeah, it's no problem at all for this fella. It really does uh, perform well, uh, roughly, I believe. The um, Rockwell I mentioned is probably somewhere between 53 and 56 RC, to be honest. Uh, the handle material is it's really just like a sheet metal um, construction, so the machine just folds this over into the taco uh, sort of style shell which you know holds the back spring in there pivots and everything else couldn't get simpler uh, it's probably made up of about uh, one uh, two three uh, four five six about six pieces uh, you know, uh, and this thing will last as long as you will so unless it rusts away so or you break it uh, which is pretty hard to do so the weight of it, you're looking at 68 grams or 2.4 ounces. Uh, you're looking at uh, the manufacturer is uh, in, it's manufactured in France in uh, uh, Tiers, uh, France, and uh, it's uh, they started manufacturing these in 1929. Okay, so as I say, rich history. And uh, the manufacturer is MC Cogent Cutlery. Uh, the product code on it is a DD815 on this particular one. Uh, I bought this, you know, in Australia uh, for uh, between fifty and sixty dollars. Uh, in the US, um, you can buy them for twenty-five, thirty dollars, and that sort of range. So. Uh, the blade style on this is you can see the way it's it's got the well it's got the design uh, obviously and it's got the which is quite nice it's just a uh, electromechanical etching that they've uh, they've done on there uh, with a satin uh, sort of brushed uh, finish on the on the blade you've got uh, a Srimata style uh, blade which is uh, I think Middle Eastern or something, or Persian or Middle Eastern, and uh, which is uh, quite an interesting uh, sort of style and lends itself to when you're cutting to putting your finger there or your thumb there. So it actually does seem to serve a purpose on this particular uh, knife. And uh, it's uh, obviously got that Melanesian uh, spirit god, uh, uh, which uh, is the bringer of doom and bad luck. Uh, which I believe in 1929 when uh, uh, the uh, uh, the company and the man who uh, uh, designed and uh, basically uh, uh, went after a business of selling this uh, knife he uh, sort of discovered that uh, maybe that wasn't such a great pick that Malaysian spirit god uh, due to the fact that uh, the people that he was trying to sell it to, which were in the area, thought, well, they could relate. Well, they did. Uh, however, the relationship that they have is that it's a very scary uh, spirit god and bad luck. So you really don't want it on your... Uh, uh, you don't want to be carrying it around with you. They're quite fearful of it uh, due to their beliefs. So uh, back then, not sure about now, but... Uh, it was uh, marketed to other parts of the world and it took off so and then I think they did you know I'll, I'll throw up uh, an image in there showing you some of the other uh, models that models that were targeted at specific countries uh, but uh, yeah uh, easy knife to deal with because obviously you, you've got the uh, uh, the blade shape, they could slightly change. Uh, the handle pretty much, uh, in most cases, stayed the same. It came out with a sheep's foot, came out with uh, uh, like a just a spear point, like the uh, cat knife. Uh, so they could sort of mess around with it, do different things for different countries, and uh, have uh, marketing success. So uh, and successful they were. I think they're into the fifth or sixth generation of. Um, um, of uh, 
the same, keeping it in the family, the MC Cogent family, and uh, they, yeah, are still doing them today. It's just, uh, I think about, you can correct me on this if I'm wrong, but I believe from what I've read about uh, 10 employees, and uh, they're in that beautiful spot in France, and uh, he is, uh, I'm probably pronouncing that wrong too. <laughs> Uh, so, yeah, sorry about that. I'm probably butchering it, but uh, I'm not French. I'm Australian, so probably an extra butchering there. But, yeah, look, um, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of uh, history about it, and maybe in the background I can, you know, you can I'll bring up some, uh, I'll insert some pictures of some various models and uh, uh, showing the different colours of some other ones that... Uh, that are made, they make, uh, they've done in more recent years, but I'll give you just a little bit of the, um, the background on it. It's a, um, the Duc Duc, um, is a French pocket knife, knife of a simple sheet metal uh, construction. It's uh, being manufactured by the MC Cogent Cutlery Firm in uh, Thiers, uh, France, since 1929. The external engraving of the Duc Duc was created in 1929 by Gaspard Cognit of Cognit, Antonio and Gaspard for sales to France's colonies uh, on Oceania. Uh, the handle depicts a Duc Duc or a Malaysian spirit incarnation. Uh, Cognit, uh, Cognit, and I'm not sure how you pronounce his name, surname, sorry, um, uh, based the design on engraving in an illustrated dictionary. Later, other designs such as the Al Baraka and the Tiki were uh, developed for other regional markets, particularly in French, French Algeria, and even down into Sub Saharan Africa. So, as I say, it, it, it did end up in some, the hands of uh, uh, some other countries that may have used this uh, for uh, nasty purposes. And, uh, yeah, they, they used to make it sort of into a fixed blade by um, hammering this part here, these two sheet metal. So those two parts there, hammer them down. Uh, and it basically stopped the blade from folding in, which uh, allowed them to have uh, uh, a sort of makeshift fixed blade. And uh, yeah, so I've heard of the French Foreign, Foreign Legion using these. Uh, so uh, all around the world, uh, these have been nearly a hundred years uh, they've been going for, so they've certainly gotten around with many different uh, designs. I believe now they're even, they've even got a VG10 version uh, along with different handle materials and some very specialised high-end versions. Uh, but very interesting and it's certainly, it's rough, you know, uh, that's what I like about it. It's, it's got uh, that real rustic sort of uh, look and uh, yeah, it's nice to have something with a bit of history behind it and uh, this definitely serves that purpose if that's what you're into. Look, I won't uh, prattle on any more about it. Uh, I can't think of a lot else to talk about. Um, if you've got anything to add or to mention or any questions you might have, I'd love you to um, put your comments uh, down below. Always appreciate uh, comments. And if you could like and possibly even subscribe if this sort of information is uh, of help to you or interest to you. So that's about it. This is Tom Rush, Rush Reviews, signing off. Another night review. Till next time, see you then. Thank you.